PyTorch plus Lightning is the coolest thing around StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about an introduction to coding neural networks with PyTorch and Lightning. Lightning lets you do awesome stuff with neural networks, yeah. This stack quest is also brought to you by the letters A, B, and C. A, always. B, B. C, curious. Always be curious. Also, I want to give a special BAM to one of my co-workers at Lightning, Adrian Valschli, who helped me create this tutorial. Note. This StatQuest assumes that you have already seen the StatQuest introduction to PyTorch. If not, check out the quest. Lastly, you can download all of the code in this StatQuest for free. The details are in the pinned comment below. In the StatQuest introduction to PyTorch, we started with this super simple dataset, and then we coded this super simple neural network to fit a pointy thing to the data. To do this, we created a class that contained code for the weights and biases, and for running data through the neural network. And then, completely separate from that class, we wrote code to optimize the neural network with backpropagation. Bam! Well, even though the code worked like we expected, we had to come up with our own learning rate for gradient descent. And, generally speaking, Figuring out a good learning rate isn't always easy. So it would be nice if there was a tool that could find a good learning rate for us. Also, it would be nice if the code for training the neural network were easier to read and write. Lastly, we'd have to make significant changes to this code if we had GPUs or TPUs to accelerate learning. For example, this code runs fine on my laptop, but if we wanted to accelerate it with one or more GPUs, we'd have to make a lot of changes. The good news is that we can do all of these things and more when we combine PyTorch with Lightning. So let's go back through the code and show how we can do things easier and improve it with Lightning. Bam! First, just like before, we import Torch to create tensors to store all of the numerical values, including the raw data, and the values for each weight and bias. Then we import torch.nn to make the weight and bias tensors part of the neural network, and torch.nn.functional for the activation functions. Then we import sgd so we can use stochastic gradient descent to fit the neural network to the data. So far, everything is the same as when we used PyTorch without lightning. But now we import lightning as L to make training easier to code. And now we need tensor dataset and data loader from torch.utils.data, which will ultimately make our lives easier when we start working with larger datasets. And just like before, we'll graph our output with matplotlib and seaborn. Now let's build this neural network. Note. If all we want to do is create a pre-trained neural network and run data through it, then everything is the exact same as before, except now when we create the class, we'll name it Basic Lightning, and we'll inherit from Lightning Module instead of NN.Module, which is what we did when we used PyTorch without Lightning. Other than that, creating this pre-trained neural network and running data through it is just like before. In other words, just like before, we create an initialization method for the new class, and the first thing we do is call the initialization method for the parent class, Lightning Module. And, just like before, we create the weights and biases for the network by creating a new parameter, initialized with a tensor set to the value for the weight or bias. And we do that for each weight and bias in the network. Bam. Now, just like before, we need a way to make a forward pass through the neural network that uses the weights and biases that we just initialized. So we create a second method inside the class called forward. So we can see what's going on, let's move the code for forward to the top of the screen. <laughs> 
Again, just like we did when we used PyTorch without lightning, we create a new variable, input to top rail u, that is equal to the input times the weight w sub 0, 0 plus the bias b sub 0, 0. Then we pass input to top rail u to the rail u activation function with f dot rail u, and scale the rail u output by the weight w sub 0, 1. Likewise, we connect the input to the bottom rail u and scale the activation function's output. Then we add the top and bottom scaled values to the final bias, and use the sum as the input to the final rail u to get the output value. Lastly, the forward function returns the output. So, just like before, we have created a new class that initializes the weights and biases, and does a forward pass through the neural network. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I write a block of code, even when it's mostly the same as something I wrote before, I like to test it to make sure it works as expected. So let's test the code by plugging in a bunch of values between 0 and 1 that represent different doses, and see if the output from forward results in this bent shape that fits the training data. Again. Just like before, we can create a sequence of numbers between 0 and 1 using the lenspace function from PyTorch. We store the tensor in a variable called input doses. And we can print out and admire the input doses by just typing the variable name input doses. Now, in order to run these input values through our neural network, we make a neural network that we'll call model from the class we just created basic lightning. Then we pass the input doses to the model, which, by default, calls the forward method that we wrote earlier. And we save the output from the neural network in a variable that we cleverly named output values. And now that we have both the input values to the neural network and the output values, we can use them to draw this graph. So we set the Seaborn style to white grid so the graph looks cool and then we use line plot to draw a graph of the data. Lastly, we set the y and x axis labels. And that code gives us this graph. The graph tells us that the neural network we created earlier, basic lightning, does exactly what we expected. Hey, so far, pretty much everything has been a review of basic PyTorch. When will we start doing cool stuff with lightning? Right now, Squatch. So we can demonstrate how Lightning makes it easier to train a model, we'll set B sub final to 0, and make a copy of the original class we created, Basic Lightning, and change the name of the copy to Basic Lightning Train, because we want to train this neural network. Then we change the initial value for final bias to 0, 0.0, and we set requires grad, which, remember, is short for requires gradient, to true. And, because we will use a lightning function to improve the learning rate for us, we add a new variable, learning rate, to store the value. Note, for now, we set learning rate equal to 0.01, but this is just a placeholder value, and the actual value does not matter right now. Now, just like we did before, we can verify that this neural network no longer fits the training data, by drawing a graph of the neural network's output. Only this time, we are using basic lightning train instead of basic lightning, and because final bias now has a gradient, we call detach on the output values to create a new tensor that only has the values. The graph shows effectiveness equals 17 when dose equals 0.5, which is way too high. And that means we need to optimize B sub final. So we create the training data by creating a tensor called inputs with three input doses, 0, 0 0.5, and 1. And another tensor called labels that has the known values, 0, 1, and 0. However, now that we are using lightning, we need to wrap the training data in a data loader. So we combine the inputs and the labels into a tensor dataset called dataset, and then we use the tensor dataset to create a data loader called data loader. 
Data loaders are super useful when we have a lot of data because, one, they make it easy to access the data in batches. This is super useful when we have more data than memory to store it. Two, they make it easy to shuffle the data each epoch. And three, they make it easy to use a relatively small fraction of the data if we want to do a quick and dirty training for debugging. Okay, now that we have our training data wrapped up in a data loader, we are ready to optimize B sub final. Now, if you remember last time, when we used PyTorch without Lightning, we optimized B sub final with a whole lot of code. The first thing we did was create an optimizer object that used Stochastic Gradient Descent, SGD, to optimize B sub final. Then we coded for loops to calculate the derivatives needed for Stochastic Gradient Descent. Specifically, we coded a loop that went through the full training dataset 100 times, or epochs. Then, for each element in the training data, we calculated the value predicted by the neural network. Then we calculated the loss, which in this case was the squared difference between the predicted value and the known value. Then we called loss.backward to calculate the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter we wanted to optimize. Lastly, after we calculated the derivatives for all three points in the training data, we took a small step towards an optimal value for B sub final with optimizer.step and zeroed out the gradients with optimizer.zerograd so that we could start another epoch. All in all, we had to write quite a bit of code to train the neural network. Now let's combine PyTorch with Lightning to simplify this code a whole bunch. Well, wait. Hold on a second. There's one more thing I need to review about the PyTorch code. When we only use PyTorch, before we wrote this code to optimize B sub final, we created a class to keep track of the weights and biases and a forward function to run data through the neural network. And then, separately, we wrote the code to optimize B sub final. In contrast, when we add Lightning, we put all of the code relating to the neural network in the same place. So, when we create the class basic lightning train from lightning module, we create the init method that contains the weights and biases for the neural network and the learning rate, the forward method to run data through the neural network, and a new method called configure optimizers that sets up the method we want to use to optimize the neural network. And just like before, we'll use Stochastic Gradient Descent. However, this time we're setting the learning rate to a variable that will improve in just a bit. Then we create another new method called Training Step, which takes a batch of training data from the data loader that we created and the index for that batch. The Training Step function calculates the loss, which, just like before, is the sum of the squared residuals. Now that we've added configure optimizers and training step to our class, we're ready to optimize the neural network. So, since we just modified the class by adding two new methods, the first thing we do is make a new model. Then we create a lightning trainer, which we will first use to find a good value for the learning rate, and then we will use it to optimize or train the model. Here we are setting the maximum number of epochs to 34, because we know from before that 34 epochs is enough to fit the model to the data. But if it were not, the good news is that we don't have to start from zero and try again, because Lightning lets us add additional epochs right where we left off. Now that we have the trainer, we will use it to find an improved learning rate by calling tuner.lrfind. In this case, we're passing lrfind the model, the training data, data loader, the minimum learning rate, 0.001, the maximum learning rate, 1, and we're telling it to not stop early. In other words, by default, lrfind will create 100 candidate learning rates between the minimum and maximum values, and by setting early stop threshold to none, we will test all of them. Anyway, we store the output from lrfind in lrfind results. And we can access an improved learning rate by calling suggestion on the results. 
Now, just for fun, we can print out the new learning rate that we stored in new LR to see what it is. And we see that the new learning rate is 0 0.00214. And lastly, we can set the learning rate variable in our model to the new learning rate. Now that we have found an improved learning rate for stochastic gradient descent, let's train the model. To train the model and optimize B subfinal, we simply use the trainer to call the fit function. Fit requires the model and the training data, which we named data loader. When we call the fit function with our model and training data, the trainer will then call our model's configure optimizers function. And in this case, that means configuring a stochastic gradient descent optimizer using the new learning rate that we just set. Then the trainer calls our model's training step function to calculate the loss. Then, without us having to do anything, the trainer will call optimizer.0grad so that each epoch starts with a fresh gradient, loss.backward to calculate the new gradient, and optimizer.step to take a step towards the optimal values for the parameters. And then it calls training step again and repeats for each epoch that we requested. In other words, the big training loop that we had to code when we use PyTorch without lightning is reduced to just coding the loss in the training step function when we use PyTorch with lightning. Bam! Now, to verify that we correctly optimized B subfinal, we can print out its new value and we get negative 16.0098. Hey, can we draw one last graph to verify that the optimized model fits the training data? Yes. We can verify that the optimized model fits the training data by graphing it with this code, which is the same as what we used before, except now we don't create a new model and instead just use the one we optimized. And this is what we get which shows that the neural network does exactly what we expect. Double BAM! What if we want to train our neural network on GPUs or use some other fancy accelerator? On a very basic computer, like a laptop, you might only have a single processor that does all of the work called a central processing unit, or CPU. In this case, our neural network, and specifically, the tensors that represent the weights and biases would be on the CPU, as well as the tensors that represent the training data. And when all of the tensors, the ones for the weights and biases and the ones for the data, are in the same place on the CPU, then we just do the math for backpropagation to train the neural network. However, training a neural network on a single CPU, which might only have a few computing cores, is usually relatively slow. With this simple neural network and this simple data set, the speed really doesn't matter. But if we had a fancier neural network with tons of weights and biases, and a ton of data, then running everything on a single CPU might be too slow to train in a reasonable amount of time. So, when we need speed, we often train neural networks on one or more graphics processing units, or GPUs, which can have 10 times or even 100 times more computing cores. And when we use PyTorch without lightning, then we have to manually move the tensors to the GPUs, and keeping track of what tensors are where can get pretty complicated. And that means we can't easily test our code on our laptop with a single CPU, and then port it to a system with a lot of GPUs without having to change the code a bunch. In contrast, when we use PyTorch with Lightning, we can let Lightning automatically detect if GPUs are available by setting Accelerator to Auto when we create the trainer object. And we can let Lightning determine how many GPUs are available by setting Devices to Auto. Now, with Lightning, we can test our code on our laptop with a single CPU, and then move it to a fancy computing environment with a bunch of GPUs without having to change the code. Triple BAM! And don't forget, you can download all of the code in this StatQuest for free 
The details are in the pinned comment below. Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest PDF study guides and my book, The StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!